Psychiatrists suggest that adversity teaches us everything we need to know in life, and that true power comes from overcoming adversity. <laughs> but the truth is that we are powerless to stop the paralyzing fear of being invisible and insignificant. This is almost always true without a significant event that pushes us uncontrollably towards change. I'm Natalie Isles. Thank you for watching. Wealthy advertising executive Thomas Stenning has been acquitted of all charges this evening. Stenning was found not guilty in Worcester Superior Court of six counts of aggravated rape. The first charge was brought two summers ago against Stenning by an unnamed victim. Told the court that Stenning was not to the ground before raping her. The child continues to exhibit symptoms consistent with sexual trauma. Severe psychological impact from prolonged physical and sexual abuse have manifested in the child's behavior. She presents with anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder. And despite there being some signs of improvement, she continues to exhibit extreme emotional swings in the form of depression, anger, low self-esteem. Given the child's young age, however, I believe there's an opportunity here to prevent reactive abuse. I will continue treatment in the security of my home environment, and despite this being an orthodox methodology and a bit controversial from a clinical perspective, I've committed to loving and nurturing this special young girl back down. I believe this method can have great impact. Morally weak people are dangerous, especially when they're rich. Some like to cloak behind fraudulent, undeserving success and rarely have meaningful relationships in life. They either buy people, manipulate them, or they just force themselves on those that can't fight back. And rarely are these parasitic predators held accountable. anyone plan to become an asshole or work in a shit job? Maybe. The prefrontal cortex is what separates man from apes. Executive function, personality, planning. 
do these people use those reasoning skills? I mean the ones that separate us from a chimp shitting in the jungle to decide they want to work in a cubicle till they hopefully make it to an old enough age that they can live off a fixed income until they die. The addiction center is in the prefrontal cortex, and some are more abnormal than others. Like this drunk, sleeping off his fifth year of too much damn whiskey. Or this lady, willing to do anything to shove a needle full of euphoria into her bloodstream. And this fat fuck, hardening off another artery one cheeseburger at a time. I'm surprised he doesn't drop dead right here. Toxic degenerate behavior. It's almost a state of death. If people truly depend on adversity to evolve, telepathy would be commonplace, and we'd know everyone's intentions, good or bad. serial killer task force has reported their fourth homicide this year alone. Did you finish your homework, dear? have to put these books away when you're done reading them. I really wish you'd read something else. I know, but I really like these books. Okay, honey. I'm so proud of who you've become. I got you a little something. Thank you for keeping your promise. There's a number of head injury acquired sociopaths, serial killers that received head injuries before their killing sprees. Richard Ramirez got nailed by a swing. Fred West crashed his motorbike and Albert Fish fell from a cherry tree. But a brick to the back of the head could do it. Maybe two bricks. Uh huh. Yeah, no, that's cool. All right. Stunning hasn't answered me. How many times do I need to ask you, where is Mr. Stenning? This deal needs to get done today. Hey. Are you not getting it? This is important. Just get it done.
Now you can't let the prefrontal cortex get all the glory. The amygdala handles decision-making and emotional responses. Charles Whitman, the Texas Tower sniper, he had a tumor the size of a grapefruit on his amygdala when they cracked his skull open at the autopsy. This begs the question, can you really blame them? Are the intellectuals onto something? Albert Fish can't be blamed for dismembering and eating a girl. Richard Ramirez didn't plan on stalking and killing women, and Charles Whitman was too emotional to contain himself. He had to shoot those people. Was every bullet a cry for help? Or something else? If you should ever encounter such a soul, and it's an extremely small portion of the population, usually men, Run. Some people suffer from chronic worthlessness when they're persecuted. So to compensate, they hurt others to survive. They do it for vengeance, for justice, for compensation. Mr. Stenning? Did you find what you were looking for? Special Agent Dex Stanton. Untie me. Do you have any real idea who it is you're looking for?
I invariably lowball the number of stupid individuals in circulation. I know you aren't Mercedes Hollingsworth. Put it down. Who are you? You can call me Mercy. I'm addicted to killing people. My prefrontal cortex is deformed. What are you doing? It's so good that it makes me obsessively plan perfect murder. Put it out! Stop! But sometimes... I just improvise. So scandalous, so corrupt I'd do anything for money and love I'm a pariah Oh, I'm a liar Don't wanna die without no scars Shoot from the hip, baby, shoot from the heart or just awaken I'm a criminal, so despicable Tell me I'm thinkable And then it feels good to be a criminal So despicable, tell me I'm thinkable And then it feels, then it feels good Police are investigating a fifth and sixth homicide tonight. Authorities have reported that Mercedes Hollingsworth died in a fire in her apartment where her boss, wealthy advertising mogul Thomas Stenning, was also found deceased. Investigators tell us the post-mortem trauma analysis suggests Mr. Stenning was the victim of foul play and are asking the public to come forward with any information they may have concerning Mr. Stenning's whereabouts leading up to the fire. If you have any information that can help solve this crime, call the Worcester County Police at 555-911-0911. My favorite commercial on TV? The National Floors Direct commercial, of course. Because <laughs> I... Because who doesn't need um, good hardwood floors? <laughs> or carpet? <laughs> well, we've got you covered. Mercy began as an idea I've had for quite a while. I recently retired after 33 years on the police department. I worked in the major crimes division, uh, including some serial killer cases. And one of the ideas that I had for quite a while was to highlight a serial killer that's female. And I had reached out to Ed Gutierrez, who I had seen a whole bunch of times on Facebook. I'd watched all of their, their films. Oh boy. Oh my God! They just made me laugh. And there was something about the, the work that they had done that drew me to them. I had come across a few of Dan Rosario's films. What is this? Was always a big fan of his. So when we had the opportunity to meet up with him, chemistry immediately clicked. Ed called me and said, hey, you, you want to go down to Tits? And I was like, I love Tits. And Tits is a uh, tavern in the square, if you don't know. We can't use that. Can well, we? but, but, no. But, but no, but listen. And we knew right there, literally, within 10 minutes that we were going to end up working together on something new. I reached out to Dan Diaz over at Westerman's Prop House. He says, hey, I have some materials for the set if you want to come take a look at them. Dan has a very good relationship with the neighbor, David Clark Company. And fortunately for us, 
they handed us a key and told us we could use it for as long as we needed to to shoot the film. And for any independent filmmaker, space is always the greatest challenge, especially if you're going to build the set the way we plan to. So when I got the phone call from Dan that the set had arrived, uh, my heart immediately started pounding fast. I'm like, holy crap, here we go, this is it. I think between all of us here, we can get this empty pretty quick. I think I think he's good to go though, this guy right here. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I think it's gorgeous. Take a look here, this is shoot ready. There were raw materials, there were materials that had already been professionally painted, there were windows. Get this, get this, look at, look at the muscles. It was puzzles to a set. We took everything out, spaced it all out, basically put this thing together without any instructions. But one thing that I noticed was little puddles were everywhere. There was water in the warehouse. I remember saying to Ed that we should probably put stuff up against the wall, and he looked at me and said, what are you talking about? You really think it's like a soap? Yes, I do. There's no way there's no water gonna get in. It wasn't anything that I really was concerned about. What are you talking about? There's puddles everywhere. We should do something. Go for it. You do it. Okay, watch me. <laughs> Why are you so mad all the time? <laughs> he did the right thing. I think I was too excited to really pay attention to what potentially could happen or what did happen. Puddles? I'm not worried about puddles. Oh, but he will be. Hello, world. Welcome to 100 Barber Ave, where we would be holding our auditions for Mercy, June 13th, at 100 Barber Ave. But it's down there. The sign doesn't lie, folks. Barber is barber, but you want Randolph Road. That way. Welcome to Revelation. We have a new sponsor, Daydreaming Brewing Company out of uh, Derry, New Hampshire. These guys are awesome. And I'm honestly telling you, you if you find these beers, you gotta try them. Oh my God. It is so good. And it's a 4.7, so it's like an all day drinker. The amazing part of making the Mercy set was that Ed Gutierrez had skills that I don't have. He's, he's an electrician by trade. I would come in the following day expecting to have sort of a list of things to do and they were already done. We wired the whole thing as if it was a real apartment. The switches worked, the outlets worked, everything, the stove worked, the fridge worked, everything worked. Casting is something that I critique myself on from past experiences to try and make every casting call better and better. What up, y'all? Come on in. <laughs> One uh, just showed up. We've got 14 more coming today. We will see. Is what separates man from apes. Do you really think a woman running from you would leave the door open behind her? Do you have any real idea who you're chasing? Then, of course, there's the injury-acquired sociopath. Heard this one? New England has so much talent. There's so many great actresses here. But there was one particular person who stood out in my mind. I often grossly underestimate the number of stupid. I wrote down one word in my notepad. I wrote down the word brilliant. And, and I knew, I think at that point is I knew she was my first choice. It's so exciting. I mean, the adrenaline that's running through my body is crazy right now. If people want to like my performance, that's up to them. I just go in and I, I do what I feel is right, and then I leave it at the door. So we have a very good friend in Dan Diaz who runs the prop house in Worcester. He was a humongous help during this entire process. So me and Dan went through the prop house, picked everything out. Dan Diaz loaded it up in his box truck, dropped it down to the warehouse, me and Dan Rosario unloaded. So we're carpenters, electricians, set decorators. Dude, we do it all. Started furnishing and really making that set come to life. This is what happens when you have a small budget, but you got a lot of people who want to make stuff happen. No egos in this production, right, Ed? It doesn't matter if you're the director or you make coffee. Put your hands on it, you get it done. It really took a team of people to take that raw material 
and turn it into something that looked great on camera. It's the real deal. I walked into that room and I was like, this feels like an apartment. Holy moly. It was quite mind blowing. Feels like somebody lives in here. I feel really good where we're at. We're at a way better place than I could even a dream of. I'm speechless how this has turned out. Oh shit. I contacted Gabby Ross and somebody that I've always wanted to work with and she's extremely talented. We brought her in as the art director and she was the one that was able to put together all the small pieces to make that set come to life. Coming alive now. It's all about the little details. That's know? right. We have more work to do though. Yep. Walking through there when it was done, it was a real apartment. So it's been raining for uh, several days now. And uh, Dan Diaz, who's usually the bearer of good news, called to let me know that we've had some water infiltration. Hopefully the damage isn't too bad and it doesn't set us back. Well, it's not as bad as I thought it was. So I think we're gonna be okay. Uh, we'll see over the next few days. It's supposed to keep raining and uh, hopefully it won't damage any more of our set. Fingers crossed. I feel like I tried on maybe 40 different outfits and we really got to craft the character piece by piece. I don't know if about that blue and gray. Which is something that an actor doesn't always have a say in. So I was really thrilled and incredibly grateful that I was able to hand pick the pieces that Mercy was going to wear. <laughs> I love the yellow sweater. I hope I can eventually get that yellow sweater. <laughs> Dan, I'm sorry to call you this early, but our set is completely underwater. There's three inches on the ground, completely all the way around. It's completely submerged, the whole fucking thing. Hurricane Elsa gave us a nice drenching, and unfortunately, the set is reported to be underwater. Okay, so it is as bad as I thought it would be. There's a lot of water here. A lot of water. Okay, well, let's see what uh, what can be done to repair this. There was, you know that much water, my sneakers got wet, my socks got wet. And I knew for sure it was gonna take some work to do this. Oh man, that's bad. It was really tough to get all that water up. We literally lost the carpet. That, that's how bad it was. The carpet was so damp and smelly, it was, it was terrible and it had to be replaced. And I really thought, okay, we're gonna have to push this set off um, for quite a while. And I called Dan and I told him all the details and of course he, he encouraged me rather than giving up. And so I felt a little bit better, uh, encouraged by his support. And so I, I called Ed and Ryan and I said, look, well, we, we have a disaster, but let's do our best to try to clean this up. And if we can pull it off, we will, and if we can't, We'll put, push the shoot off for a little bit and we'll relocate the set upstairs so we don't have to, have to worry about flooding. Fortunately, Mother Nature stopped peeing on us. Dan Rosario brought in Jesse Hicks. He came in with a humongous box truck with every single piece of equipment we could imagine. We had a big studio rag that we stood up. We put it outside the window so that when we shoot, it would look authentic, like we were in a neighborhood. Cloudy weather today, trying to make the best of it. Wait a minute. After that hurdle of the, the flood, I was like, oh my God, thank God. Because this looks as kick-ass as I was hoping it would. We're getting there and it's fucking looking mint. My friend Alejandro Tochi, he owns a studio. We went there to record the audio. It was great because I was able to work with my director, Dan, extensively, and we took our time. You're being critical of their addiction. Yeah. Because yours is so much worse than theirs. So I felt that that helped me get into her character more. Or this fat fuck, hardening off another artery one cheeseburger at a time. 
I'm surprised he hasn't dropped dead already. Miraculously, <laughs> I looked through the window and thought, great, I actually have visual representation. <laughs> Are we happy? I mean, there's a lot to go through there, but I think all of our lines are covered. There's some great ad-lib stuff in there. Yeah. The recording session really helped her solidify in her mind what this character was all about. Mercy's just one crazy fucking bitch, so <laughs> it's fun getting to say her lines. Ryan is beautiful and so gorgeously shaped. Yeah. So perfectly round. <laughs> Shortly after we finished our recording session, we went right to set. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I walked into the set. It was one of those <laughs> type of moments. It looked like this. <gasps> I was so thrilled to see a set like that in Worcester County, which is where I come from, and, and just local filmmakers putting together really top shelf Hollywood production quality. <laughs> <laughs> This wasn't the first time that Derek and I have worked together. He is a generous, fantastic scene partner. So I was thrilled to get to work with him again. What the fuck? Ah! Oh, where's my Chinese food? It's gonna be time to cook it, you bitch! <laughs> to talk to me, how are you doing? I'm excited, man. We got one week left. I'm in the shower with my fucking cell phone getting soaked. Just awful. Um, I hope you... <laughs> Principal Photography Day is one week from today. What's really weird, I'll tell you this. When me and Ed first started doing filmmaking, we lived in this neighborhood. And now we're back here making the biggest thing that we've ever done. We definitely uh, started off with a bang. Everything was smooth and it just was too weird smooth. And then the hiccups started happening, but we're ahead of the game and we are ready to go. We were in detail mode. We had set out all the smalls and all the particular details, including uh, food items. There wasn't much left to do. Studio rag is down, lights are in place. We were ready to go. I bring my wife and my two children down to the set. I'm excited to show my wife. My wife could care less. My kids were like, you know, whatever. They're four and one, they don't care. But I cared. There was a moment for me. I really enjoyed that day. And we left early. It was like 2 o'clock on a Saturday. It was beautiful out. Get to go home and do family stuff. I actually took my cameras in there and I did a whole bunch of slow moving shots of just the set because I wanted to remember how much work we had put in. When we had the finished product, taking a step back, it was just kind of like, wow, what did we just build? It was, it was amazing. We felt really good uh, that afternoon when we left the set that we were ready to shoot. And then, I got punched in the face again. Boom. And less than two hours later, Boom. the sky opened up, Boom. and the Lord above said, Boom. 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 no rest for you wicked boys. Three inches of rain in like a two and a half hour time frame. We got flooded out again. And this flood was 10 times worse than the first one. And we were one week out. Really not fun. Very disappointing, but I know we're gonna get through this. We've done all this work and our floorboards are floating. The three of us couldn't keep up with it. We were here until 10 o'clock, 10.30 last night. Finally got the puddles up and this morning, thank God. <laughs> It uh, wasn't terrible, but it still sucks. Never quit. Right. That's not our style, right. you know? Just get in there, get your hands dirty, and dry it up. Even if the building's on fire, as long as the firemen have it under control, we're shooting. Yes. Yeah, we got that, though. Damn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Even the freaking FBI wants to eat our food. Imagine. <laughs> How does this food look to you? This looks amazing. Are you going to eat this? No, never mind. <laughs> I guess I didn't answer that question. What food item was the best that you put in your mouth? The meatballs. The fluffy meatballs. Definitely the meatball. Everybody's saying the meatball. They were, they were fluffy and they were hearty. I actually didn't try the meatballs. Mine was the chicken parm. I love the chicken parm. You got second. I did, but it was a different item than I chose the first time. This is happening, you guys. Mm. Like mom, well, actually, it was really good. Because the second time around, you got some chicken. I did. It was it was terrific. Everybody kept saying the meatballs were the best dish, so they actually put it put one in my mouth. <laughs> Just because I like the balls in my mouth doesn't mean you have to say it too. Oh, right. <laughs> oh my God, this is not gonna be on. He's okay, fine. Let's move on to something else. Thanks a lot, Dan, for not contributing. <laughs> We got through it, we shot, and it turned out unbelievable. We did a great job as a team, and the results are, are in the final product. Is it finally time to replace that banged up floor with a durable and beautiful laminate? Please don't play that commercial. At National Floors Direct, you can get an entire room of laminate flooring installed the next Every week. single time I look up, Sam is trying to sell me hardwood floors for $333. floor. Get your laminate floor installed the next day. Uh, what do you think of this floor? This floor? Oh, I think it's nice. Could be some hardwood floors. Can help you. I can get you hooked up with that. <laughs> I am the editor, so I can do what I want.